everyone, welcome back to the channel. Bit of a different setting. Thought I'd make a video on the medical school interviews that are coming up. If you are one of the people who were able to get an interview offer this year for Australian medical schools, congratulations. It was a really weird year with the scores changing and it was quite hard to get an interview offer, so you should be really proud of yourself. On the other hand, you know, if you were unsuccessful in getting an interview, I think it's a good point to sort of recalibrate. It's gonna take a few days before it sort of settles in. And then I, I guess just plan forwards and it all it all does fall in place in the future. Although in the moment it might not feel like it. I've definitely been there the first time I applied. I wasn't successful and it's like a really bad place to be in. So if you feel like you want to chat to someone about it, feel free to just message me on Instagram and I'd love to just sort of debrief with you and, and plan forwards. In this video, I'm planning on running through sort of the broad areas that the interviews look at, uh, at Australian medical schools. A lot of the medical school interviews are the same. You know, some are in a multiple mini interview format where you have different stations and you go in and do um, each station is about five minutes, so you do like mini interviews with different people each time. Whereas there are some handful of unis that do kind of panel interviews, right? Where um, you've got say three people interviewing you for an hour. Um, so universities like the Australian National University, so ANU or Flinders University go for more of a panel approach. Whereas universities like the University of Melbourne or Deakin um, and a few other ones do multiple mini interviews. Um, regardless though, the type of interview you're sitting, in terms of the content, there's basically three main areas that they do test. So I'll run through each one and I guess dive a bit deeper to talk, talk a little bit about uh, what exactly they're testing and it might not be what you think. So yeah, let, let's jump into it. Just a bit of background, so I interviewed at three big universities in Australia. Um, I was able to get an offer from each one. I can run through, you know, my exact journey into medical school in a future video. But yeah, one of the offers was a full fee place, which is why I did defer it to get two Commonwealth supported place offers the next year. Um, which is when I took up one of the offers and I'm currently in my first year of medical school. And I think having interviewed at three unis, I was able to get an understanding that, you know, at the end of the day, they're really just testing the same things. They're just using different words, different phrasings. Um, but at the end of the day, they're looking for the same candidate. Now, the first type of stations or questions that you might be asked are relating to public health knowledge, right? So these are stations where they could ask things like, uh, what is one of the most pressing uh, health issues currently in Australia? or something along the lines of uh, what do you think about the current shortage of doctors in rural towns and how do you feel about it? Now, how do you answer these questions? Instinctively, it might think they're testing how much you know about public health. Now, this is just an example. Say, for example, you know the statistics, right? That 67% of rural towns have a shortage of doctors. Now, they're not really looking for that. They're looking for something more. They're looking for, say, you delving deeper into what the issue could be. So. So that's one answer where you spit out the stat. The other answer could be, um, yes, there there is currently a big shortage of health healthcare professionals in rural towns, and the way to fix that is not only monetary incentivization because we have been doing that and it hasn't really been working. The real um, the real solution to this big problem is to first ask the doctors what are some blocks that are in place that that might stop them from going into a rural town. And one of the big ones, in my opinion, could be. Um, this this notion that once you go into a rural town that your your career is kind is kind of going to slow down, uh, you know there's blocks to networking and aspects like that. So we need programs in place to help these doctors even network whenever they're in rural towns. And so the first step will be to ask the doctors what it is that's stopping them from going to rural towns. And then you can delve deeper into say not having support structures in rural towns and things like that. So I think that's what they're looking for in these stations. So any station where they ask you about rural health, indigenous health issues, or maybe even global health issues like, you know, the current pandemic, instead of just exhibiting what stats or what kind of knowledge you're aware of, try to deep deeper and try to think what kind of structures in place are in place in society that might be causing these issues. That that shows, now that'll put you as a candidate who's, who doesn't only regurgitate information but is someone who can think deeper and in the future can become a doctor who can be a good advocate for these people. Now the second big type of stations that they like testing is testing emotional intelligence. So these are ethical scenarios that they put forward, um, usually quite bizarre ethical situations and the questions usually like how would you act or how does this make you feel? I'll just give you a quick example. An example could be say, say you're at a clinic working with a doctor 
um, as a medical student, you're, you're shadowing this doctor who you see is prescribing certain medications that, that you think might not be the correct ones or might be sort of not evidence-based. And the, the question could be, as a medical student, what are your next steps? So what do you actually do? What, what they're looking for in these stations is not someone who's gonna solve the problem, right? It, it's not someone who's gonna go and straight up report the doctor and call up the patient and tell them, you know, you've been given the wrong medication, stop taking it. They're not looking for an extreme response. What they're looking for is, are you someone who can take a complex situation, break it down, validate the facts, and then can take steps while taking into consideration everyone this decision is going to impact, right? For example, they wanna see if you're empathetic. If you're empathetic not just towards the patient, if you're empathetic towards the doctor, if you're empathetic towards the profession. Like, are you taking that information in front of you at face value? Or, are you, or is your answer going to start off by saying, I will first try to validate if what I think is correct. Because in this situation, I'm obviously a medical student. My experience and my knowledge is not as much as this doctor. However, the concerns are quite serious. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to verify if what I think is correct. And that could be by consulting some, 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 other, some other doctors in, in the clinic or by talking directly to the doctor and bringing it up in a really civil manner and saying, hey, um, I, I would just like to know why this patient was prescribed this because what I've learned is this. Could you please explain this to me? So your responses are not really extreme where you're reporting someone or um, you're straight up you know, going to the patient's house telling them not to take it. That, that's really gonna put you as someone who's quite reactive and impulsive versus someone who can think these these complex situations through. That approach to thinking about every player in this situation is the best best way to go about these stations. Take a minute, because you usually have like a minute, minute and a half to think about the situation before you start answering. So take that time to think about, okay, look, in this situation, this is not just the patient that's gonna be affected by what I do, it's a doctor. It's also the medical profession in general, right? Because if this doctor is, is um, prescribing the wrong medication and you make a big fuss about it and it's not true, there will be further mistrust from the public towards this, the medical profession and you don't want to be a part of that. So think about all of these different aspects that could affect, uh, your your decision could affect um, and that's what they're looking for and make that obvious. Don't, don't assume that the interviewer knows. Like start off by saying, okay, when I'm thinking of this situation, I'm considering um, the patient who has been prescribed the medication, the doctor who prescribed it, and in general, the clinic and the medical profession and how my actions are going to affect them. I think you get the point. Uh, let's move on to the next one. One of the other big, big area that they like testing is just personal experiences and motivations towards a career in medicine. So what, why do you want to do medicine is obviously, I'm sure you've heard of it. That's like the big question you usually get asked straight, straight out the gate. Um, but even things like, you know, what kind of experiences have you had where you worked in a team or where you were um, a leader, where you had a leadership role. Now, what they're looking for here again is is not just like random details about this one experience you had. They're looking for someone who's had certain experiences and have had learning points from it, okay? For example, when you, when you get asked, you know, when was the time you worked in a team, instead of you going on about your work at a certain clinic for five minutes, you should talk about, yeah, like I, I was part of a team at this clinic. From this, I understood that teamwork is all about collaboration, respecting others, and effectively communicating your ideas, and say, creating a culture where everyone feels comfortable in talking and, and bringing up their points, okay? So those are the things that are probably in front of the rubric. You know, the rubric doesn't have, um, effectively describes their experience. It'll, it'll mostly have, uh, do they understand what teamwork really is? Or even leadership, let's take leadership, okay? Like, if they ask you, tell us about a time that, that you, you had a leadership role, again, don't go on about that time, talk about, in, through that experience, I learned that, that a good leader talks to everyone in the team, is, is not, a, it's not, it's not an authoritative figure, but someone who takes everyone's ideas into account, and if things go wrong, instead of humiliating someone in front of the group, they take people one by one, and then talk to them, uh, in, talk to them one on one, and try to figure out what could be causing it. And that again shows to them that you know what a leader is. And just finally, I know a lot of you might be preparing for the why medicine question. It's a big one, right? How do you answer why do you want to do medicine? Because, because there are some there are some pretty obvious and generic answers that that could place you in the, in the bottom pile of the interviewees. I think just the main thing you should focus on is instead of going on about how 
say you had that one experience at a, as a kid uh, which put you towards that career and from then on your life has just been about medicine that shows someone who, who got into medicine quite naively and just stayed on just cause as opposed to think about this narrative okay something happened when when uh, in your childhood or whenever where you got interested in this career but then you took a lot of steps to learn a lot about this career and now you're there in front of them a person who went from a naive interest to more of an informed decision to 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 begin this journey because it's a big one right so what i would recommend is instead of going on about one experience come up with four or five aspects of medicine you want to touch and then connect different experiences to it i'll give an example for example when i when i got asked why do you want to do medicine um I knew that I want to touch on the fact that I like teamwork, I like talking to patients, I like I like um, teaching and I also like research. So I had four different experiences that I sort of condensed in that five minutes and I ended off with the answer saying, you know, throughout my life I've had all these experiences um, which which have propelled me towards this career in medicine and now I'm here because I'm, I'm really sure that this is the career for me because it just combines all my interests into one. If everything you're saying is true, it will come across as genuine. Hopefully, hopefully this kind of made sense. This was just a quick overview on the three different aspects that they're gonna test and that's about it. They don't really, it's not too complex. They basically test public health, personal motivations and ethical situations that's about it uh, I can't really go into the specifics because of each uni because I did sign an NDA which with each uni understandably um, but I think if your prep is kept general and you're thinking about these kind of things it's it's not just good for your personal growth and conviction over over committing to to medicine but also it will be it'll come really handy um, during the interviews as well hope you hope you guys enjoyed this this video and if you did feel free to leave a comment leave a like subscribe um, follow me on Instagram message me on Instagram if you do have interviews coming up and you're kind of getting too stressed and again if you were unsuccessful in getting an offer this year you will be fine trust me we can push through this and if you're struggling first of all if it's it's a big draining process this one applying to medical school doing the GAMSTAT interviews if you, if you need professional help please go see your GPC a counselor there's, n there's no shame in it and if you want to talk to me again just reach out to me and we'll have a chat about it and it's completely confidential I'll see you guys on the next one and thank you for stopping by good luck for your interviews